Hey everyone, I'm Ari, creative director here at Heaviosity. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over how to lose your mind while writing a psychological thriller style track. This one is quite the journey and it might leave you feeling intrigued and maybe a bit uncomfortable at the same time. <laughs> Using our newest product, Uncharted 88, I tried to focus on the organic, earthly nature of the percussive piano. Uncharted 88 is an amazingly expressive and unique percussion library, with sources sampled by striking the piano board with things like mallets, hammers, hands, brushes, scraping the strings, picking the strings, and more. You know, all, all that stuff that we do here at Heaviosity. It really lends itself beautifully to that uncomfortable but intricate sound of the psychological thriller. So, I composed a track influenced by scores like John Powell's don't Worry Darling, and the A24 Blumhouse-style trailers like Get Out, Ma, Nope. And then, you know, a little bit of Deadwood Westworld thrown at the end, too, because why not? <laughs> so, let's take a listen, and then we'll make our way through this wild journey together. Here we go. Okay, so <laughs> let's get into it here. That was um, a lot. That was a lot of different genres all jam-packed into one track. There was the kind of thriller horror vibe with the whispers at the start. The um, kind of sci-fi vibe with that massive synth bend. And then, um, yeah, Western. Why not? Western at the end. Deadwood. Or Westworld, I guess, with synth. Um, with the solo violin and the acoustic guitars. It's got a little bit of everything. Actually, it's kind of like the Dark Tower series by Stephen King. One of my favorite novels, series, um, sci-fi, western, horror, all of it. Anyway, so I started with the percussion and the whispers to get into that really uncomfortable space. Not a lot going on. Um, it starts with these string glisses strumming across the keys. I spent a good amount of time kind of making space using the stage feature in Uncharted. So you got these scrapes kind of on the corner note. And they're out all the way in back spread in this arc in the rear. And then you have the low thumps. 
which are really, really great sounding, almost kick drum, just hand on the wood thumping away. Most of the rhythm is done by playing. It's really loose. The parts here are not quantized. They kind of fall into each other. Um, actually, <laughs> one of my favorite parts, it's so simple, but one of my favorite parts is the loop that comes in here. Um, let's just solo this. So it's straight. And then this one. kind of pulls you in. It's this offbeat thing. It's so simple, but it it really adds to that unnerving nature again. So on top of those guys, I added these whispers. And this was just me on a microphone. Um, I almost passed out from it, but it's just me on the mic. <laughs> just uncomfortable and that that's actually where um i took the part idea from the don't worry darling soundtrack where the female voice is singing and while they're singing they're doing that <sighs> that like matthew mcconaughey wolf of wall street thing where it builds a thump but right at that thump you get that bump in pitch again just Building that tension. Nothing is really perfectly aligned. Nothing is perfectly quantized. Nothing's perfectly in tune. And to anchor down the bottom here, I'm using just a, a synth pad that kind of wobbles around. I just tracked playing around with an analog synth, and it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> And that takes us right to the drop there. You know, there's not, again, there's not that much going on. Um, actually, that was one of the things that I, I ended up doing in this track was realizing that harmonically, it's fairly simple. It doesn't move too much from the D minor pedal um, simply because there's so much stylistically and timbrally going on. There's all these organic sounds, there's these synth sounds, there's these whispers that are bouncing around left and right. Um, so having too much harmonic movement made it way too complex. Okay, so at 19, I actually did something really neat with Avant, our electric stage piano. In Avant, we have all the mechanicals, the inner workings of the electric piano, the pedal down, pedal up, key press, the clangs of the chimes and stuff on the inside. And I took the note and brought the volume all the way to zero. So you're not actually hearing the note itself. You're just hearing the mechanics of the stage piano playing. And it sounded really, really neat. And on top of that, I have kind of auto panning left and right, and then some delay Add it on to add some warble and a little more space to it. It filled out that drop at 19 really well, leading up right into that massive analog synth bend. That bend is all the stuff behind me. It's Eurorack, the synthesizer.com rig, a Boomstar, and a Minotaur. Um, on the Minotaur, I added a little bit of Fury to add some more body and fuzz to it, and you know pulled 
the limiters all the way down, squashed it, but kept the low end bypassed so that we didn't lose any of the low thump. It's just huge and so surprisingly out of place, but it worked. And I'm going from this like intimate whispers to this super wide, super open, really, really loud sizzly synth part. And right after that, you suck it back in. Everything gets really, really tight. Um, all the percussion comes close on the stage. These wood clacks that are happening, again, not quantized. They're really, really loose, but close, close, close to your face. It almost feels like you're inside the piano board. And on top of that, edit some loops in and use the performance tool again to build these kind of transitions between measures. I actually did that by accident. Um, I hit a key that had the performance tool on and it was almost a triplet into it not quite but it worked really well so I ended up building that as part of the groove um, the groove is steady but not steady enough to be um, boring keeps it interesting there's things that change here and there but it's a fairly open beat so having these kind of fills fall into the downbeats worked really well and I'm using things like the swell at a rate of 65% with a little bit of random on the time and velocity, stacking a couple of them together, and you get this really cool sound. On top of those, we added some acoustic guitars. I have a timeless warbling delay running on top of it that's diffused to add some real unease to it. There's a lead guitar part that kind of comes in and then over those I start bringing in some scoring acoustic guitars parts to get into that drop again where the synth comes back in at 35. Let's take a quick listen to just scoring acoustic. These cool reverse acoustic chimey things. That synth part comes in again at 35. Slightly different this time. The rate of the bend is a little different, so it's not exactly repeating. And right there, you bring in some vocalese phrases. Those phrases are just gorgeous. They're great. They worked so well. The melody and timbre fit perfectly with what I was going for. Um, and then it swells into 44, which is where it kind of, I don't know, I think of this as almost like the end of the opening credits, right? You get the start, which kind of introduces things. Then there's this act B where you're starting to see names of people working on it. And then act C, which is this, here's the name of the show. Uh, <laughs> um, and it ends Pretty quickly, it only does one and a half cycles through, leaving you wanting more. At least that's the hope. Uh, at this end part, I bring in solo violin, me on the fiddles, fid fiddles, me on the fiddle, <laughs> me just playing violin. I don't really know where it came from. <laughs> or why I put it in, but it felt right. 
got that sci-fi western thing going on, I guess. I don't know. The beat kind of kicks in a little more strongly. It's more steady. And that kind of takes us right to the end. Um, the whispers come back in, build a little more tension, tie it into the first half. There's a couple of more sweeps, these reverses that pop in from Uncharted 88. Let's listen out. So that's it. That's the track. It was a blast to write. It was a journey. I had no idea where it was going to go or where it was going to end up. I knew that I wanted to do a lot with space and show off Uncharted 88 and its versatility and organic vibe in nature. Uh, um, hopefully I achieved that. I hope you liked it. Click like if you did. Leave comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Join us on our mailing list. Check out Uncharted 88, heaviosity.com slash Uncharted 88. Thanks for watching. Take care. Mm, dang it. I got no water. Mm. All right. Ah, damn it. I still haven't got water. Ugh. I forgot my water again. Take three. We're on take three. Take five. Please send help. Ah, I've lost my mind. Okay. Oh! Blah! Blah! Blah!